Well, that wasn't meant to happen. Hello? Oh! Wow. Oh. Oh. Okay, I've set a $4,000 budget. We're gonna buy the most ridiculous phones we can find. So we'll start with eBay. Um, I've actually just found something here. This is apparently the first phone in the world that can be washed with soap. My interest is peaked. Ah, Galaxy Beam 2, phone with a built-in projector. Oh, um, I've meaning to test this phone out. This is, well, probably the most advanced thermal imaging smartphone to date. This is gonna be fun. This Star Wars phones. Star Wars made a phone? Dilemma. <laughs> I can either pick the dark side or I can pick the light side. This feels like, a, like an important life moment here. Yeah, let's get both. Aha, um, this is another one that's been on my radar for a while now. And as far as I'm aware, this is the only BMW branded smartphone on the planet. Well, that's uh, one way to burn through a budget. Okay, so we've got $1,018 left. It's time for somewhere a little cheaper. Also, thanks to Surfshark VPN for making this possible. Oh, goodness me. I would say it's good to be back, but we've had some real experiences on this site. We've seen some things. Smartphones. Hmm. We've got a Huawei Mate 40 RS. This is a copy of, well, the highest end phone Huawei makes right now. The real version is something like two and a half thousand dollars. We'll see how close this can get. Okay, no, no, they went further. Uh, this phone right here, I'm pretty sure it's a copy of the Virtue Signature S and the real version of that phone went up to $50,000. Of course, we have to get the latest iPhone. This one actually looks like a legit listing. I'm just, I'm just confused as to why. Like, Wish.com is a very um, special type of environment. You know, sellers on this site, they, they just invent specs for their phones. Who is going to actually try and buy a legit iPhone from Wish.com? Blows my mind. That's the one I'm looking for. 2020 6.1 inch i12 Pro Max at just $46 in rose gold, apparently. Oh. And now it's $75. Just a normal day in the life at wish.com. Do you know what, while we're here, let's go to the homepage. Why not? Not gonna lie, this one is kind of doing it for me. It's like a BTEC version of a DVLA Phantom, which is one of those incredible Bluetooth speakers that I've not got round to testing yet. So the wish.com version it is. $3 drawing tablet. We've got lens covers for iPhones. It's kind of weird, but I'm curious. Oh. Ah, would you look at that? Just as our budget starts running out, the uh, the iPhone, no, 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 the phone i13 Pro Max shows up. Really, again? <laughs> what is she doing? <laughs> we got a mug, dear dad, thanks for being my dad. If I had a different dad, I would punch him in the face and go find you. <laughs> We're done here, this has been fun. So all of these um, high quality products come to $414.88, which leaves us with 603 left. I've got a pretty good idea of where we can get something very weird. It's AliExpress time. I did not know this was a thing. It's a smartphone with an 8,000 milliamp hour battery and night vision. And it's probably not a scam. I have used Ukitel phones in the past. Don't get me wrong, they're no Samsung or Apple, but you know, they're also no wish.com. It might actually work. They've got a BlackBerry Passport, which yes, is a BlackBerry phone, but I remember this thing getting announced. I remember looking at it at first sight and thinking, that's so weird, I wanna try it. And I even actually remember emailing BlackBerry's PR team asking for one, but they didn't send it. Let's do this, this will be fun. There's a $42 phone which claims to have a Snapdragon 615 chipset. That's not like ultra high end, but for $40, you expect a phone that barely works. This on paper, pretty capable. Wait a second, wait, this is a feature phone, but it has a triple camera setup. That's so weird. It was only a matter of time before someone was gonna call their phone the Max Phone Max. Well, you've almost definitely never seen that one before. That is adorable. Okay, let's get one of those two. I think I'm probably gonna put that over there now. We've done enough. Now the waiting begins. Right, it's been three months. Well, for me at least, it's probably been more like three seconds for you guys. But basically what we're gonna do is open up all the bits and bobs 
And then we're gonna get to the smartphones, because like these Star Wars ones look ridiculous. Let's uh, let's start with the speaker. This really takes me back. Bluetooth speakers used to be like one of the main components of this channel. This speaker in particular, this is like a DVLA Phantom knockoff. The actual versions of this speaker are like about as good as they get. They've kind of got the looks right. Oh. Bluetooth oh. mode. It actually doesn't sound like a cat dying, like I kind of expected it to. The sound only comes out from one side, so the rest of it is just for show, but do you know what? It was $20, I'm actually not disappointed. This is a writing tablet. It feels like nothing's there. It feels like a, like a phone case. Very curious about this because it was just incredibly cheap. It was like three, four dollars. Okay, so what should I draw? Um, I'm, I'm pretty proud of that actually. All right. Time to give you up. So this one is iPhone lenses, and I'm strangely excited about this one. And now I'm assuming we just peel off the sticker and drop it on. It's actually not horrendous. I think in hindsight I probably should have picked a color that suited my phone more, but I didn't expect to like this. Okay, if this is what I think it is, yep. It's time for the star of the show, guys. Dear dad, thanks for being my dad. If I had a different dad, I would punch him in the face and go find you. Love, your favorite. This is going to be my new mug for the rest of my life. Okay, phones. And I just remembered, I should probably tell you before I forget, less than 50% of you who watch these videos are actually subscribed to the channel. So if you do enjoy them, then a sub to the channel would be a wish come true. Right, so this is the, the Digno Raffre, which is the elegantly named washable phone. Thank you, Doki. It's a very interesting looking phone. It makes you very grateful to be in the year that we're in. All right, let's take it for a spin. Oh, this is ridiculous. And it works. So let's, just for the sake of upping the ante, <laughs> cover it in shaving cream. <laughs> Okay, the screen's gone off. But it does still work. Would you look at that? Right, this is the Galaxy Beam 2. It didn't actually come like this, that's just me being an idiot with a knife. Um, but this is so weird. This phone was released at a time when companies didn't know what worked. They were very much just like, well, this feels like a good idea, let's try it. And that kind of decision making is what led them to put a projector on a smartphone. It's actually not as thick as I was expecting. And if you want to see it in action, well, take a look at this. So you tap one button and immediately there's like no lag at all, it appears on screen. It's really impressive, like that was like an 80 inch screen and it didn't look noticeably pixelated. Got the Coca-Cola phone. Oh wow, the spec sheet. Screen size one inch, battery capacity 600 milliamp hours. Oh my God, it's even cuter from the other side. Look at this. It's hard to believe that this is an actual functioning phone. Oh, that's the battery. Oh, it's delightful. <laughs> Could you imagine just like pulling this out on the train? Like, hello? The problem I'm actually having is that my fingers are so big, I almost can't just press one key. Okay, this one's come at a little bit of an awkward time. I literally just made a video about why you shouldn't buy rugged phones. And that's exactly what three months ago me actually did. I do still stand by what I said. I don't think this is going to be a good phone. I just think that it has one extremely cool feature. It's just a tank. Oh yeah, that feature is night vision. So I've got the normal camera app open now and you can kind of roughly see what's going on. But when I tap this, it goes pitch black. You can't see anything. And that's because this is a thermal camera. So you'll actually see that when I turn on the night vision mode, these little infrared sensors on the back will just fly on. So this isn't a way of miraculously capturing landscapes at night, but it is a way of capturing animals and people. And you know what's kind of cool? This phone is kind of like a more premium version of that. It's still using thermal imaging, but this company, Cat, has actually partnered with a company called FLIR, or FLIR, or Flyer. Basically, they make thermal cameras, and this has one of those in it. But the way this phone is angled is less about night vision, more about being able to see through walls. Okay, so I am on the thermal camera right now, and first interesting observation is that if you look at the floor, you can actually see the underfloor heating slats below the carpet. Oh. 
Check this out. So <laughs> this room is freezing cold, right? I've left the window open, but look at my MacBook. It's like the, the temperature of an oven. That's ridiculous. Hey, do you wanna see what a $70 version of a $50,000 phone looks like? I'm pretty sure this is the fake Virtue. At least the box has a slight like leatheriness to it. It comes in a plastic bag. Oh no, the box looks like it's been punched on the way out. All right, well, let's hope the phone hasn't. It does seem to have some fingerprints pre-baked into it, um, which is slightly concerning, but do you know what? It feels great. I just realized I'm pretty sure it's got fake buttons on it. That doesn't press. This, which looks like a volume slider, doesn't press. It's all done on the keypad. Very disappointing. And that gets your attention. Okay, so it's pretty much the same like crummy low res screen. I don't think this would be a particularly great phone to use, but it's definitely one to show off. Let's see how good the camera is. It's so bad. Oh my God, it's so unbelievably bad. All right, let's give it a go. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna post this on Instagram now. Let's, let's see how few likes I can get. And actually in a similar vein to this, um, luxury on a budget, this is the Huawei Mate 40 RS. Pretty sure the lid's on backwards. We've got two layers of protection here. Do you know what? It doesn't actually look as bad as I thought it would. Okay, uh, hmm. every one of these cameras, but one of them is fake, but they've kind of nailed the overall aesthetic. Like they've managed to get the matte finish here. They've managed to get glossy on the sides. They've got the rings and the overall look pretty spot on. Do I feel like I'm holding $3,000 worth of phone? No, I can actually like pull it off. Well, that wasn't meant to happen. Oh, that's the Wish theme tune all over again. <laughs> Same theme song again. <laughs> a few dead pixels are up. I've never seen a hole punch cutout like that. This is so funny. Okay, so can you see how there's one actual camera there? Because the Huawei Mate 40 RS is meant to have two cameras, they've drawn one on virtually. It's like at the point when you're gonna ship someone a fake phone, why bother? All right, let's just try the camera now we're here. Oh, beautiful. Look at the detail. So this is, I believe, yeah, so I had to go back and refresh myself on exactly what this was, but essentially I spent $40 for a phone that's completely unbranded, but has surprisingly good specs. And doesn't look too shabby either. Is this as good as the specs make it seem? Okay, I mean, it's not great to use. Everything does feel a little bit sluggish, and I don't think this chipset is being pushed to its maximum here. But at the same time, it's still so confusing. Like, who made this? Who woke up one day and thought, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna make a completely unbranded phone and put components in it such that I'm selling it for like, no profit. Right, we are nearly at those Star Wars phones, which I'm very excited for. But this one right here, this is the phone with built-in earphones which is actually something I've been saying that I want to see on a top-end smartphone one day. But hey, for now this will do. It's an absolute tank of a phone. So I'm assuming that a big part of that is A, to accommodate the earphones, which are sitting up here, and B, presumably for a bigger battery. Let's have a look inside. Wow, this feature phone has a 6,000 milliamp hour cell. Just to give you an idea. Just for some perspective, this is an iPhone 12 Pro Max. This is what we're working with. Absolutely loving the size of this thing. Okay. okay, I mean, given the fact that this entire package was like, I think it was less than $40, it's not bad at all. These are not earphones I would say are good. They're basically just entirely base, but it's a fun experience. And because obviously they're built into the phone, it's just like seamless connectivity. The BlackBerry Passport. Something I've ever told you guys is that before I got my first ever Android phone, I was actually a BlackBerry user. That's good packaging. It's so wide. So within two seconds of holding it, I can see straight away why some people loved it. It's so unique as a form factor and it feels just really sturdy, really solid and well built. But at the same time, I can also see straight away why this didn't take off. Like ergonomically speaking, this thing disobeys just about every rule that's been built for us. Like if you think the iPhone 12 Pro Max is an uncomfortable phone to hold, this makes even less sense. You can actually tell that Blackberry's put a lot of thought into this UI. They've really made it something quite original. Is this my iPhone? 
It's so unbelievably wrong. <laughs> it's got four camera lenses. They look nothing like iPhone camera lenses. The front looks like a like a $50 Android phone. I love how the only brand name on the whole thing is HD screen. <laughs> All right, there are three phones left. And these three phones are pretty much 50% of the entire budget. The first one is from iQ. This is the BMW phone. Got a little insert inside of which is, ooh, it's like these little memorabilia cards and a lovely case. It's slightly frosted and it's got the BMW logo here and it's got a little bit of texture in the middle. Cable and, oh, it's a 120 watt charger. I've only ever seen this on one other phone in the world. It's a proper heavy brick as well. This is some high-end stuff. This phone has a 120 hertz display. It has 256 gigabytes on the base model. And this 120 watt charger, it charges the phone 50% in five minutes. Oh, and it looks so good. It's got what looks like a, a vegan leather finish, but the design itself, white and red and black and blue, I'm a big fan. And it turns out, you know the main camera on this phone? It's actually the 50 megapixel Samsung GN1 sensor which is apparently better than the 108 megapixel Samsung HM1 that you see on a lot of phones. So we gotta try it. Oh man, it's such a good camera. Like the amount of detail that you can get on these leads, even though the lighting is kind of terrible. I genuinely think if IQ was a global brand, like across the US and the UK, this might well have been on my best phones of 2020 list. It's Star Wars time. <laughs> The force is not strong. <sighs> I think the best way of doing this is probably just to open them at the same time. We've got what I'm assuming is the light side and the dark side. There we go, there we go. Oh my goodness. So it says Rogue One. I think these came out as like a promotional item for that Star Wars film. I really want to keep this in mint condition because as far as I'm aware, these things barely exist. So it says on the front of these, a premium figure collection. No way. Is it just me? It almost looks like the, the Lego logo. Yes, yeah, so you almost kind of assemble it yourself. It's made out of proper solid metal. Yeah, it's the same figure set, whichever one you get. So the only difference is just the color of the packaging. But that is so cool. Actually pretty cool looking phones. Oh, and these backs actually change color. So the light side one is between white and blue. The dark side one is between black and red. And if you watch Star Wars, that will actually make a lot of sense to you. Oh. <laughs> the attention to detail on this is ridiculous. Like if you have a look at these screens, on the dark side phone, they've actually put you inside the ship that the dark side uses. And same for the light side. And they've actually changed the logos at the bottom, as well as your home button and the sound effects of the phone accordingly. That, as someone who would call himself a Star Wars fan, is pretty cool. Check this out. That's so cool. And even when you type in like the wrong lock code, check this out. <laughs> yeah, it's just ridiculous. Okay, think about this for a second. Your location, your exact operating system, every hardware detail of the device you're on right now, as well as all of your past browsing history. These are things that you wouldn't want someone else to know, right? Because if they did, they could find out exactly who you were. Well, fun fact, this is how much information a website immediately knows about you the second you click on it. And to be honest, if it's a website you trust, that's fine. But I think it's fair to say that every now and again, we all end up on websites that we probably don't. And that's where Surfshark VPN comes in. It's not just possibly the most affordable way to keep yourself anonymous. It's just over $2 a month for as many people and devices as you want. But there's another perk. Because you can effectively pick the location you want your device to be, I can, for example, pick the US and watch US TV shows. You can effectively have the TV exclusives for every single region without leaving your home. Like if I wanted to watch Batman, The Dark Knight, it's not on UK Netflix, it's not on US Netflix, but if I switch my location to Canada, it'll just appear. So check the link in the description and use the code BOSS, which will give you an extra three months for free, as well as an 83% discount. So with that being said, my name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, and I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you.